Hello there and welcome. In this episode we are talking about soft corals. So soft corals, unlike hard corals, do not have a calcium carbonate skeleton. Instead, they have a fleshy body which contains spiny skeletal elements called sclerites. This is what they use to basically hold their fleshy body together and give it a bit of structure. They will also inflate themselves using the surrounding seawater, which is why soft corals can sometimes be a lot bigger or smaller depending on the time of day or how they're feeling. Soft corals contain zooxanthellae, which is an algae that they use basically to symbiotically protect each other and produce food for each other. So the zooxanthellae, we use the sunlight to produce food for the coral, and in turn the coral will pr provide the zooxanthellae with certain nutrients that it produces. So enough of that biology of the soft corals. Let's talk about how they are to keep in an aquarium. Soft corals are pretty tough. There aren't many species of soft coral which are easy to kill. Um, they're quite undemanding to keep, which is what makes them excellent for beginners to the marine hobby. They also are less prone to getting infections, which will kill them off. Soft corals are quite tolerant of poor water quality. So if you've got an aquarium with high nitrates and high phosphates, um, even fluctuate in salinity, soft corals are quite good at dealing with this. In fact, most of them will prefer an aquarium that is slightly dirty. They tend to grow and thrive better in this kind of environment. Because of their lack of a skeletal structure, soft corals don't really require dosing of calcium, alkalinity or magnesium. Normally, just having regular water changes will provide them with enough of these elements that they can um, grow and be happy about any extra dosing. Which is good if you're new to the hobby because dosing things can be quite complicated sometimes. So soft corals in general prefer a lot lower lighting intensity than harder corals which also makes them ideal candidates for new marine keepers because you don't need to invest in expensive high quality light units to keep them alive. A lot of soft corals will be quite happy under simple things like a T8 tube. Although they do go for a bit brighter if you can, because they do seem to uh, develop nicer colours under higher intensity lighting. Soft corals in general do rely on filter feeding more than hard corals do. So with soft corals, you need to feed them with zooplankton more regularly and also add some amino acids and liquid foods for them to uh, thrive in your aquarium. As well as this, because the soft corals use their polyps to feed a lot more, flow is quite important to them. Many of them do like a good flow in your aquarium, so having a power head or two would be a good thing for care of these corals. There are some species of soft coral which aren't really suitable for beginners. An example of these are gorgonias. These are at expert level only. And it's best to avoid any of the deep water filter feeders that don't have any zooxanthellae in them, because these rely purely on filter feeding and demand a lot higher water quality. So some soft corals can release toxins into the water. These are mainly the leather corals, and they do this to fight off competition, basically. So do be aware when placing your corals in your aquarium. Give them a little bit of space, otherwise you might start a chemical warfare in your tank. Another toxin that soft corals can have is specific to the palizoa, which is a relative of zoanthus, and it's called palitoxin. It is one of the strongest toxins in the animal kingdom, I believe. So whenever you handle palizoas, make sure that you wash your hands thoroughly after handling them and don't touch your eyes, um, nose or mouth. So soft corals in general are really suitable for new reef keepers. Even though most of them are brown, you can get some really colourful examples, especially in zoas and zinnias. You can also get some ultra colour leathers, um, which aren't brown. They can be green or orange and really quite attractive. So even though these examples are a bit more expensive, they're just as easy to keep as their brown counterparts. So even with soft corals, you can create a really stunning reef environment without all the hassle of hard corals. So I have done a video on hard corals. It'll be in the description as a link. It's worth watching that if you're comparing hard coral care to soft coral care. So thank you for watching. I hope it's been helpful and happy fish keeping.